And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show. And with the moms providing moral support, the Rangers fashion the mother of all road winning streaks, tying their franchise record with their seventh straight win away from home. And check out the Eastern Conference playoff race. For the moment, the Rangers only four back of that cut line. Islanders playing tonight. The Rangers could end the night five back if the Islanders win, but still. Considering they were 11 back at the All-Star break, the Rangers are very much thinking playoffs as we head toward the end of February. And we welcome you into the Delta MSG studios. John Giannone, Anson Carter, Steve Valiquette. We said before this night began, guys, that it wasn't hyperbolic to talk to call it the biggest February game in three years. The Rangers played 60 minutes exactly that way. I mean, that is playoff hockey, guys. And look, they deserve a ton of credit. And uh, I'm very proud of this team because after they lost to Columbus and the Islanders prior to the All-Star break, I thought they were done. You know, 11 points back. Now you're looking at it, guys, and it says to me, 14-8 and eight gets you to the points that you need to reach about 96 and you're in the conversation. If they go 14-8 and eight the rest of the way, that seems like it's something this team is capable of doing. They're writing quite a story here right now. They're, they're changing everybody's perspective on them, and they're the lead story in the league right now for one of the hottest teams. 14-8, and eight, I mean, that seems like that's something these guys can do. Yeah, right? Anson, right now it's 9 out of 12. Yeah, can I suggest one thing? Go the for Rangers, it. please bring the moms on every single road trip, please. <laughs> I mean, of all the teams... You got to start off fast against Carolina Hurricanes. They're 24 and 3 when they score first. They're 10 and 18 when they don't. And what does the Rangers do tonight? They went out and scored that first goal, Mika Zibanejad. That was huge. But I can't reiterate this enough. Moms, come on more trips. I mean, I love it. The Rangers are on fire playing in front of their mothers. I we had it. a stat on the broadcast between the moms, the dads, the mentors, and the, and the friends that the Rangers have done over the last 10 or 12 years. I think the Rangers have only lost two out of 14 games with their, with their right? groups alongside. It's that, pretty that uncanny. Must have been under our watch, though, because yeah. when my dad missed the bus, came over, hung over the next day, we got a lot. My, my dad ruined it in Chicago. He wasn't alone if I remember that. Yeah. I mean, are you surprised, though? Family is such a big part of hockey players' lives. Yeah, like totally. Guys want to play well when their moms are in the building. Yeah. You don't want to let mom down, that's for sure. I think we notice it more now in our adulthood. We all have children, and we know what that sacrifice is. Now you appreciate it when you're a kid, but boy, do you appreciate it when you have your own children. Anson, you mentioned it. Mika Zibanejad gets the Rangers on the board with 319 left in the first period. The guy's got seven points in the last two games, and he continues to just pile on important goals and assists at big time. Yeah, he was flying, and it's the game within the game that I mentioned earlier. Jordan Stahl going head-to-head -head against Mika Zibanejad, and Valley, I thought he was outstanding. Uh, you, you know what I like about this, Anson, is that he's got the right posture as he gets to the point. This is why he gets the breakaway. He's doing the little things right, the attention to detail, and now the detail of the goaltender is interesting. When you get to that decision spot at the bottom of the hash, and the goalie is down, this is his go-to move, and Anson and you and I would agree that he is a guy that gets a set move in his head before he goes down. He looks at the goaltender. Yes, he does, but his play is to the backhand there. That's the fourth time Mika Zibanejad has scored this season on a breakaway on 10 tries. Pretty crazy. Also, well, he's also reading the goaltender's depth, too. Mm -hmm. Like, Valley, when you're in net and you're thinking to yourself, you're coming down, you're seeing where the goalie is in terms of where he's in the blue paint. So I'm sure Mika saw that Peter Mrazek was high in that blue paint. So as long as you go the, the, move the puck east to west and elevate it, you get a chance to put in the back. Goals in five of his last six for Mika Zibanejad, now 27 on the season. Second period, Carolina scored early to tie it. The Rangers get two in the later stages of the period, and both were from... Something that every coach from Pee Wee on up preaches, which is if you're around the net, just get it there and see what happens. Yeah, good things will happen when you go that front of the net, and it might be that good luck that the moms are bringing, or it could be just players driving the net, and you're bringing additional back checkers with you. And speaking of back checking, look at that quick stick there by Kemi Panarin, and he passes it off to the left to Jesper Foss, and he sees again, like all night long, Peter Mrazek was aggressive, puck goes in off of... Brett Pesci skate. And then you see Brady Shea, aggressive move coming down from the point. He tries to go past Brett Pesci again. He tries to center that puck. It goes off the defenseman skate, Jake Gardner, and there's the moms having fun. I can watch that all night long. I love watching hockey yeah. moms get excited because there isn't a tougher 
fan and the audience than the hockey mom, Val. You could attest to that. <laughs> hockey moms don't play around. <laughs> was your mom loud at the games? Very loud. Yeah, your oh, mom was. Mom, and she had the Caribbean accent, too. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. She, she got and pretty it good. is the purest <laughs> form of joy when they see their kids score, too. And we saw that tonight and on Wednesday as well. So the Rangers had a 3-1 lead headed to the third. We talked before the game about the Ranger power play. We've talked since Christmas about this power play, which is the best in the NHL since then. And, Steve, they get on the board with Panarin only seven. 70 seconds in. Yeah, the power play is running hot, guys. I mean, there's a lot here. Uh, we're talking about how they get into the zone, how they're able to get into their setup quickly, how they're moving quickly into their first position and recovering pucks. I mean, there's a lot to like about the power play right there now. There is, and I'm watching the power play as it develops, and you're going to see a lot of different elements that's happening during that power play. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I'm looking at the most is Kapokak was going to learn as he develops over time, he's going to move the puck a little bit quicker. He hasn't really earned that respect from the opposition yet, so they're trying to get on him fast to try to force to make a quick decision, but it's the play right here by Philip Hedo. The quick one-touch play was a smart read, and Mika Zibanejad understands he has a safety valve out there. Just throw it to an empty area. He knows that has Panarin coming in off the slot. He doesn't have to look. Throw it to an area. He knows Panarin's there, and the bread man does exactly what he does best, Valley. He <laughs> bakes himself a cake, <laughs> and he buries that for a nice No, night. He's, he's going to be there in that circle. He's there marinating. Yeah. Uh, cakes don't marinate in other bread, but either, move along, move along. Well, we don't mind the mixed metaphors when he puts in his 31st of the season, and that's a personal career high. Past the 400-point mark for his career in tonight's game. And with a 4-1 lead, you figure it's Igor Shesterkin's yeah. game to win that. Well, I think when you start your career 8-1, uh, you're very deserving of a nickname. So we've got to find something that fits <laughs> soon. Uh, I don't think Zesty Shesty's going to fly. No. But his game has a lot of zest to it. Okay? And look, right off the bat in this hockey game, guys, structure, poise, positioning, He's able to move east to west out of the down position off the post. A lot of goalies in the NHL have difficulty with that. How about that for reflexes in the first period? Split save. Great again on the open shot. Talked about this a lot in the pregame. He's getting into that 200 range now where he has only given up one goal when it's just him and the shooter. And what that shows me more than anything is confidence and buy-in, not just from the coaching staff to give you the start, but the players to play the structure where they just give the shot to him and they know they have a good opportunity to win a hockey game. I've got a nickname. What about Vezzi? For Vesna, I mean, it's still a little early, but I'm on that bandwagon already. Here's the brakes. I mean, pump listen, them a little bit. Short sample size. But yeah. Watch what he's done so far early yeah. in his career. You've got a guy like Sebastian Ajo. Okay, he's got 34 snipes. He's got 11 goals his last 10 games, and he's one and one the goaltender. And what does he do? He passes up this opportunity early in this game. You're gonna see it right here. Hurricanes have the puck, the neutral zone. Eventually, they break the puck in. They get a two-on-one. They shoot the puck on net. Shesterkin makes the save. That's the Dezingle. And this is the Zingle play one. right there. So we're, we're looking for the other one. Yeah. We'll get to it. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, there, there, are enough, there are enough plays in that hockey game to make you feel like, and this is you, the shooter, that you don't want to take your shot. Because you're looking at a goalie, he's always in the white ice. He's two and three feet out in the white paint. If you don't see any net, I mean, now you're forced to pass? Is that is that? He's what in his thinking? mind. I mean, the clip I wanted to show us was he had a clear opportunity to shoot the puck on Shesterkin. Now, you're hot. 11 goals your last 10 games, you're not passing up any shots. And what does he do? He looks at Sveshnikov, who... Yeah, has no chance. Yeah, it's it's uh, he's he's getting a name, guys. Eight something. Eight and one, and everyone wondered what was he going to be like in North America. Twenty five and eight since he's come over from Russia between the AHL and the NHL, and the moms love it, and they should.